Hello and welcome to our tutorial. Uh, so in this tutorial we're going to do some very basic animation. Um, so at the moment here we've got Blender open and we've got a cube and the cube is selected. I can left click here onto my light, I can left click onto my camera and select them. So the object that's selected is highlighted in orange and I'm going to left click back on my cube and that's what's selected. This here is called the outliner and it kind of gives us a list of what's in our scene so I can select the camera that way or the light or the cube. We won't worry about this window for now, that's sort of the material, so sort of what color this object is and how shiny it is, etc. At the moment we're looking at the object with this selected which is solid mode. Um, so even if we colored it in here or changed the color we wouldn't see those changes, we'd have to change um, how we view the object. So at the moment it's set up for us to just do some basic editing. So let's do that. So we're going to make um, a simple um, kind of robot arm and try and make it move. Now we're not going to do anything terribly fancy with that. We're just going to you know, change, p change the, the, ob the object, its, uh, its size and its scale. And we'll um, do some duplication. We're going to add a skeleton and then connect the skeleton and the mesh. So I'm going to press uh, 1 on the numpad, so you can see down here what I'm pressing, or 3 or 7, so we have different views, that's from the top, the front, from the side, and so for this exercise here we're just going to uh, make sure this says front orthographic, so I'm going to press 1 on the numpad. Now I'm going to zoom in using the middle mouse wheel, and I want to make this a bit bigger, but I want to make it vertically bigger, so I'm going to press S, Z, Two, enter. So I've doubled the size of this object vertically. So I can constrain things to axes. I can press S and then Z, which is the up and down axis in Blender. This red one is X. So I can press, you know, S X two. Now rather than pressing Enter to confirm that, I'm going to hit Escape, and I've cancelled the function. I can do the same on the Y axis. I can press S and Y. I move my mouse and make it longer on the y-axis. Again, I'll hit escape to cancel that. Um, and so ver Blender is very versatile and simple to use when it comes to moving things, making them bigger and smaller. So I'm going to press 1 again on the numpad. So I'm going to move this object up. So you can see here in Blender there's all these, um, there's a grid in the background. So the larger squares here have a scale of 1 meter. So currently this object is four meters uh, tall, but I want to move it up. Uh, so I'm going to press G, Z, two, enter. So I've moved it vertically upwards on the Z axis by two meters. And now what I want to do is I'm going to press um, Control A, and that's apply. So I'm going to apply the scale because we scaled it so that um, when I attach the skeleton to it, that will attach at the right scale. And I'm going to apply its new position. So apply location. Now this is going to be my arm. So at the moment it's called cube. So I'm going to double click on the name cube and type in arm. Now I want to make two of these. I'm going to have a forearm. So to do that, I'm going to press shift D now after I've pressed Shift D, if I move the mouse, you can see I've got a duplicate. But I'm not going to place it by eye. I could left click and position it, but I'm just going to press the Escape key. And now those, if you look over here, I've got arm and arm.001, and that's the object that's currently selected. So um, I'm going to move this, and I'm going to move it down. So I'm going to move it down five units. So it's got a height of 4, so I'm going to leave a gap in here. So I'm going to press G, Z, minus 5, enter. So we're not going to worry about putting in an elbow for now. We're just going to leave a, a gap there. So this isn't going to be um, in any way realistic. But it's just to kind of explore techniques. Uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. So now I've got my arm and I've got this thing called arm001 so let's call double click on that and call it forearm okay so now I've got the two objects that I want but I haven't applied uh, so I'm going to press control A apply the location to that one 
Now, I'm going to add a skeleton so that I can animate it. Now, there's lots of ways to animate in Blender. I could uh, press OR and rotate this that way, uh, which would you know be perfectly fine. But when I take, if I were to take these two objects and bring them into the Unity game engine, that sort of transformation is very difficult to trans uh, transform into or to transfer into the Unity game engine. The easiest and slickest way to bring animations from this piece of software uh, into Unity is to use skeletons. So let's add a skeleton. So I could go up to the Add menu here and go Add Armature, but I'm just going to show you the shortcut. It's uh, Shift A. It brings me up the same menu, and I'm going to press Armature. Now, an armature has been added, but we can't see it. So there's two ways for me to see this. I can press the Z key and go into wireframe mode, and now I can see the outline of the arm and forearm, and then I can also see this um, uh, bone, because that's what that is. Uh, or I can press Z and go back to solid mode, and instead go over here to the properties of the armature, which are found under this icon here in the properties window, and I can go to viewport display in front. And now it's like an X-ray. It's always going to be in front. Now, this, if we were to render this out as a picture, it would never render out the bone. So uh, these are sort of invisible objects. In our game, you'll never see these. So, uh, but just for ease of use, while we're in the 3D software, you can say in front, so you can see where it is. So this bone here, as I zoom in on it, um, is the wrong size. And if I press OR to rotate it, it's also rotating the wrong way I want it to be inverted. So what I'm going to do with this bone is I'm going to press OR 180 enter. So I've turned it upside down. And then I'm going to press G and Z and I'm going to press 4 and then enter. So I've G is for grab or move, uh, Z is for the Z axis, this blue line, and then 4 because it's 4 meters I wanted to move it up and then enter to confirm. So now I'm going to change this bone a little bit, and I'm going to—I uh, want to make a new bone as well. So I'm going to go into edit mode. So just before I do that, I'm going to click on this cube here and go into edit mode on the cube. So edit mode allows you to change the shape um, of an object. So I can right-click here on this vertex, press G to move, and I can change the shape of this. Now, I'm not going to do that for now, but just so you can see that that's what edit mode is for, is for changing the shape or size of an object. So I click back on my skeleton and press 1 on the numpad and go into edit mode. Now, there are three parts to this bone. There's the base of it, there's the, the main bone, and the tip. And it's the tip that we're interested in. I'm going to move this tip down here into the middle of this gap. Now I can do that numerically because it's one, two, three and a half. So I can go G, Z, minus 3.5, and then enter. And to make a new bone, I just press one key, uh, which you'll get used to using over and over again when we're making new geometry and new objects, uh, is extrude. So to extrude, you just press the E, and now move the mouse, and there's my new bone. Now, instead of uh, typing in numbers and letters this time, I'm just going to move this by I and place it where I think roughly it should be down here at the end. I'm going to left click. And now it's in place. So I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button and rotate my mouse. And we can see that this um, piece is here. Now, before we go any further, we're just going to rename things. So this is not called uh, so it's called this whole thing is called armature but I haven't given the individual bones a name so this uh, icon here is for the whole armature okay which is called armature but this icon here allows us to get the attributes of the individual bones so as you can see here this bone here is called bone this one when I left click on it is called bone.001 so these are not a, not a good naming convention. So let's call this forearm. And this top one here, I'll left click on it, and I'm going to call this arm. 
and that'll become important in a minute when we need to know which one's which. So I'm going to go back into object mode. So I want the mesh to follow the skeleton. So that means I have to set up some sort of relationship between the two. And in 3D, that's referred to as parenting. Now, there's other ways to do it, but what we're going to set up today is a parenting relationship. So the mesh is going to be the child, and the bone is going to be the parent. And that means when the parent moves, the child moves with it. So I'm going to select this um, mesh, this arm, hold down the Shift key, and then click on the skeleton. Now, to set up the parenting relationship, I can go Control p and then I have a list of ways to connect them. And the one I'm just going to simply pick here is Bone. Now, I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to select this, hold down the Shift key, select the armature, press Control p and then Bone. So now I've set up the relationship between these two, but I need to just double check that it's correct. So I'm going to select my top mesh here, and over here in its properties window, so in this little icon here, there's a pull down menu called Relations. So if I open that up, we can see that it is its parent is the armature, which is the whole skeleton. So if I had 50 bones, this would be referring to all 50. And then the specific bone that it's a child of is the bone called arm. Now, this mesh here is also the child of the bone arm. Now, when I change this to forearm, we may see the mesh jump. Okay? And that's because it's um, reset its position to try and compensate for where this bone is. So I'm going to remove the relationship. So that's how you unparent something. You click here and unparent. So to get this mesh to be the child of this bone is quite simple. So I select the skeleton, I go into edit mode, and then instead of having this bone be the active bone, I'll have this bone be the active bone. And now when I go back out, object mode and I select my mesh hold down shift select my armature and I press control P and bone now when I select just this you can see that it is a child with the armature and the parenting type is it's parented to a bone and it's the forearm so this one is the child of the arm and this one is the child of the forearm so now let's do a tiny bit of animation so I'm going to press 1 on the numpad so we can look from the front. So I'm going to select my skeleton or my armature and I'm going to shift from object mode not into edit mode. This time I'm going to select pose mode. So pose mode allows me to um, you know, reposition uh, the armature and hopefully this mesh will move with it. So I'm going to move this. I'm going to press OR to rotate. I'm going to move the mouse and I'm going to pick a position that I think is um, aesthetically pleasing so trying to avoid intersection so I'll place it there and then left click to confirm its new position I'm going to select my top bone and press OR and you can see they both move together and left click to confirm its new position now Blender as you can see up on the top here has a whole series of tabs to make the different operations you'll do in Blender easier. So I'm going to click on animation here and you can see that it's showing me the finished animation, I've got sort of a space to work in and I've also now got this timeline down here and it's called a dope sheet where I can um, work on what are called keyframes. So with my mouse over here, over this window, I'm going to press 1 on the numpad. And now we can see the, the position of the arm. And what I want to do is I want to remember this position for both bones. So I'm going to press A. A selects both bones, or it selects all bones. And now I want to remember this position. So I'm going to press the I key. And the I key brings up the insert keyframe menu. 
and I want to remember its location and its rotation. So location and rotation. So that's what I want to keyframe on. So I'm going to left click on this. And you can see here, I've got both bones listed and I've got a keyframe. It's remembering the location and uh, this quaternion here, there's four of them, that's its rotation. And the same for this bone. So now, to make an animation, time has to pass, obviously, otherwise we have a still image. So this is our world measured in frames uh, per second. So in depending on how you have Blender set up, if I click up here, uh, oh, next one. I can see here I've got a frame rate of 24 frames per second. So in Europe, the frame rate is actually 25 frames a second. And in America, um, it's normally 30 frames a second. But I think most of the world is sort of defaulting to 30 frames a second at the moment. So let's do that. Let's go to 30 frames a second. So if I want this to be, um, say, 4 seconds long, so it's 4 times 30 is 120. So I'm simply going to, with my left mouse button, drag this along to 120. I could easily have typed 120 in here as well. So now I want a new position and then to record it. So I'm going to click on this top bone, left click, press OR, move it back, and then press, click on this one and press OR and move that back. As before, I'm going to press A to select both bones then the I key and insert keyframe on location and rotation. So now I've keyframed at frame zero and then four seconds later at frame 120. Now you can see from here, this goes up to 250 and it says end frame 250. So let's change that and let's make the end frame 120 long. So I can type that in here or in here, it's the same thing. You can see it's changed here as well. And now my entire animation is four seconds long. So when I press play here, it'll go back to the beginning. It'll play all the way along for four seconds and then repeat. And what we should see here is our animation take place. So uh, that's our first sort of tutorial, our first lesson in Blender. We've done some basic movement and scale of um, very basic primitive objects. We've added in a skeleton, set up a relationship between the skeleton and the object, and then animated the skeleton. So we've done quite a bit in uh, 18 minutes. So uh, this is what we'll be doing in class, and hopefully you'll have this video as a resource to practice and repeat it uh, on your own time. So that's all for now.